Hey guys, welcome to part 4 of this tutorial for experience by Ludovico Einaudi. If you haven't watched the other parts yet, click on the links in the description or on the info card on the top right of your screen. Okay, now we're getting to rather difficult parts, because now the left hand will also play a lot of notes really fast. Here's what we're gonna learn in this part. First off, this symbol means crescendo, which means to grow or to gradually increase in volume over time. Okay, as you can see, there's a lot going on here. We'll again start with the left hand. The notes you play on the left hand are actually the same as in the last part, just the difference is you don't play them once, but you will also play them in a pattern. Here's the pattern that you're going to play. You can now also play this A up here, you don't have to convert this back to F sharp, alright? So these are the first three notes, F sharp, C sharp, and A. And the pattern you play is simply F sharp, C sharp, A, C sharp. Okay? And this pattern stays the same. If we call them one, two, three, then it's one, two, three, two. All right? You play this pattern four times as always, and then go to the next chord. So the first chord will sound like this. All right. The second chord, you already know the notes. A, E, A. You play this in the same pattern. One, two, three, two. And then you go to the chord, C sharp minor. And you also play C sharp, E, and G sharp, and then back to E. And the same thing for D major. Alright, that's going to be the left hand for the first half. In the second half, the end changes a little bit. The beginning stays the same. F sharp minor. A major. C sharp minor. And then D major. But, on this D major, the pattern changes. You play the pattern twice. So, D, F sharp, A, F sharp, once more, and then you play this. Okay, so again, play this pattern twice, and then you play the D, F sharp, but now you go down to E. And then you just play downwards. D, C sharp, B, A, G sharp. Okay? So you play downwards in the key of A major. Meaning that you don't play C and you don't play G. So again, like this. And I would recommend that you play these first two notes with your pinky finger, your middle finger, and then play this E, not with your ring finger, because it's going to be very hard to play the next note if you're here with your ring, ring finger. So instead, I would recommend that you play this with your thumb, because then you can play downwards easily. First three notes, and then again, your thumb on B. Okay. So you always play the simple pattern of thumb, index finger, middle finger. 
Okay. Because you also got to do this very fast, actually, if you want to play it in the original speed. All right. So the second half of the left hand is going to sound like this. That's it for the left hand. Now let's look at our pattern for the right hand. This is what we're going to do. And this is also not very easy to play, but you're going to figure it out. Let's listen to this first. Okay, so what you do is you play this top C sharp, then the bottom C sharp, and then you play B A. Okay? So this C sharp, then one octave down, to this one, and then you play B, A. That's the four notes that you play. And again, as before, you play these four notes four times in this pattern, like this. All right. You play this exact thing for the first three chords and for the last chord the only thing that changes is that you go up from this bottom C sharp to this D okay the rest stays the same so C sharp D B A all right so let's listen to the right hand ones. So it stays the same for the first three chords and then on the fourth chord it changes from C sharp to D. All right, now the right hand changes again. Now this is what you play. All right, here's what you do. You play A, C sharp, G sharp, F sharp. Okay. These are the four notes, and you again play them in the same pattern. The top note, bottom note, and then the two in-between notes from top to bottom. All right? And again, this is going to stay the same for the first three chords, and on the fourth chord, again, this lower C sharp changes to this D. Okay. So again, the right hand starts with C sharp, B, A. For the first three chords, on the last chord, this lower C sharp changes to D. And then for the second half of this part, you play A, C sharp, G sharp, F sharp for the first three chords again. And then on the last chord, this lower C sharp changes to D. All right. And always the same thing, always four notes played four times per chord. 
Now, playing both hands at the same time is a whole nother thing here. I would recommend to you that you practice this very, very slowly and then slowly raise the tempo. And basically what you do is you play one note on the right hand or one note on the left hand. So if we listen to the first chord, it'll sound like this. So it's always exactly the same, four times. You start, F sharp on the left hand, C sharp on the right hand. Then you play this lower C sharp with the right hand, and this C sharp with the left hand. Then you play A on the left hand, B on the right hand. And then you go back with the left hand to C sharp, and with the right hand, you're going to play A. Okay? So practice this until you got it, and then try to play it until you can play it faster. If you got that down, you can go to the next chord, A, B, A, and basically do the exact same, just with some different notes on the left hand. Same for the third chord. And for the fourth chord, the right hand changes to this D, right? From this C sharp to this D. And that's the four chords. The difficulty in this part is that you play different patterns with both hands. With the left hand, you play this pattern of one, two, three, two. But with the left hand, if we call this one, two, three, four, then you play four, one, three, two. So it's a whole nother pattern on the right hand. And playing these two separate patterns with both hands at the same time is what's difficult. So first try to focus on the notes that you're playing and play the right notes at the same time. Right? And when you got this down, and you got some muscle memory, then try to speed it up slowly. But focus on playing the right notes at the right time first, before focusing on playing the right tempo. That's very important. Otherwise, you're just going to learn how to play it wrong, but really fast. Now, for the second half, the exact same thing applies, just different notes on the right hand. This is what we play now but the pattern stays the same. You play at the same time as the left hand. Now at the very end it's going to be difficult because now the left hand, as you remember, plays this. Which is a whole nother thing. There's no reoccurring pattern in there. So this is going to be difficult to combine with the right hand. That took me quite a while as well. So in the beginning when you practice this, focus very closely on the notes that you play on this last chord and then very slowly try to speed it up. So it'll sound like this. Okay.
this was very difficult to learn in the beginning to stay in this pattern with the right hand but play something completely else with the left hand but after a while when you got the muscle memory on the left hand and you don't have to think about what you're playing anymore then you can combine them easily and play it faster all right so first off practice the left hand until you especially can play this technique of putting your thumb underneath your middle finger Maybe actually you'll figure out a better way to play this. This is just the way I figured out for myself. I don't know, maybe there's a better way. But once you learn this, once you got the technique down for the left hand, and you don't really have to think about it anymore or look at your left hand, only then try to combine it with the right hand. And in the beginning, it's going to be hard to remember which note have you played on the left hand already, which note do you still have to play on the right hand, it's going to be a little difficult to remember, but you'll get it down if you just have a lot of patience and start very slowly. It took me a long time as well. Okay. If this part on the left hand is too difficult, especially to combine with the right hand, just continue to play this chord. D major with the same pattern one two three two okay it's not that bad if you can play this this is basically just a transition to the next part but it won't sound that bad if you don't play this transition so don't worry if you're not yet able to play this you can always add those fancy transitions later all right that was it for this part let's listen to everything once more And that's it. If you have this down, you already figured out one of the most difficult parts in this song. I also found playing this first part in not that easy with the ring finger and middle finger. To always play this in between. Not as easy as it looks. But you'll also figure it out by practicing a lot, being patient, and building up this muscle memory of the patterns. Alright, that's it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.